Hi guys, I'm recording. Um, welcome to Two Black Girls, One Rose, where two black girls invade the whitest show on earth, The Bachelorette. I'm Justine. My co-host Natasha is off frolicking around in London. London, oh my god. Frolicking around in Rome. Um, and we'll be back soon, hopefully with a husband. Um, but in the meantime, we have Cien Fleming here to recap last night's episode. I'm so excited to have her as our guest. Um, but in the meantime, make sure you guys rate, review, subscribe. If you're listening to us every week, we really, really appreciate it. If, um, when we're growing this community, if you guys can just make yourselves aware and out here, put us on Reddit, Twitter, all that stuff. Um, our email, if you want to email us, is the number two black girls, the number one rose at gmail.com. We're also very active on Twitter, even though it seems as though the Russians have hacked us. The Russians or North Korea, I don't know who it is. But someone has hacked us. We'll be back soon. Um, but our Twitter is 2BLK girls, the number one rose. Um, yeah, and that's where you can find us and we hang out. So, for now, it is time for some church announcements. Okay, so church announcement time. We got a bunch of emails from last week's episode, and we also had a pretty pretty solid download um, count from last week. So thank you, everybody for tuning in and hearing what we had to say about Garrett and his just filth. Um, we got an email from Erica talking about Leo and how he was pranking like a, a Home Depot and immigrants. And this these batch of guys just seem to be really problematic. I don't know if it's social media in general that's driving uh, heterosexual men crazy or if it's just that these guys are nuts. Um, email us, tweet us, let us know what you think, but it's, it's getting weird. Um, somebody else emailed us about Leo, um, Alexis, hey Alexis, um, about him doing like softcore porn. I don't know. I'm looking forward to that conversation with Becca. Hopefully he has that because that'll be good. That'll be a good preview at least. Um, then we got an email from Emily just showing us love and just... Nice progressive love. So thank you, Emily, for your email. We got two emails from two different people about perspectives towards Garrett's apology um, and towards his kind of sentiment behind it. Um, we have Rhiannon, who is a history teacher, and she said that it's even more fulfilling to educate someone who's bigoted than someone who thinks they're woke, which I think is a really good point. Um, this might end up being like some really great social justice win. You never know, you know, uh, we do all things through Christ. So who knows? But, um, I thought it was a really interesting perspective, um, especially because she is teaching U.S. history to all kinds of kids, um, which requires a lot of race talk. So thank you, Rhiannon, for your perspective. Um, and then we also got an email from Teresa who said that he might actually be sorry <laughs> and um, maybe we should kind of give him the benefit of the doubt of the experience that he had in the house. Maybe he's going to change. Maybe he's going to say something on the show um, about his opinions. Who knows? Um, but we'll have to give him a chance. Of course, Natasha and I don't want to give him a chance. <laughs> we highly doubt either of those situations are going to happen. But uh, there's got to be a happy medium in between hating him and putting him in a, in a category full of bigots and uh, just giving him a good old shot and seeing the best in him. Um, so we'll see if we find that happy medium this season with Mr. Garrett. Um, okay, now let's get into the recap with CN. Woohoo! So now we're recording. Yay! Okay. Hi! <laughs> Guys, I'm here with CN. I'm doing the the work of Natasha this week, 
and we are going to be going through the episode. Cien, how are you? I am great. I'm new to this hosting a podcast thing, so forgive me if it sounds a little janky from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> no problem at all. Thank you so much for being here. While well, Natasha's off finding a husband in Rome, her pictures are so Is she dope. Really- Oh. Is she really? I know she just posted one actually. She's like doing a cooking class or something. Of course um, she is. Oh my god. Is she really you're trying to find a husband? I mean, they had that whole show on Bravo about. I know. What do you feel about that show, by the way? I think the concept is rooted in like absolute ignorance and craziness. Yes. <laughs> but the yes. show itself was good. <laughs> Yeah, the show itself was good, but I agree. I was like, wait, so you're telling me black women have to go all the way to a different country to find love? This is not, this is not good. Right. And it wasn't like Africa. It was Italy. Like, no. <laughs> like what? <laughs> this episode was a good one, I thought. It, like, yeah, I thought it was the best one so far. Mm-hmm, for sure. Like, usually my family leaves me alone during these, and they were all around me. Like, what do you think? What do you think? Oh, my God. Yeah, so. I thought the, the second episode was a little bit boring to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but this one, yeah, this one was a little bit more interesting. Yeah. So, how, well, when did you get the call to go on to Becca's season? Um. So, she started filming her season right after, after the final rose. Like, I think within a week or two, they were already filming bachelorette so they let us know pretty soon after that they were thinking about bringing us on because um we filmed that episode in mid or like towards the end of march okay yeah 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 yeah. mid march super duper soon Uh uh-huh so did they have to get do like a lot of persuading to get you guys onto the show or you guys all down no i mean we're all down i mean for me it was tough because i had to get off work for the day which is always hard Mm -hmm. um but no i mean everyone wants to we all love becca and any it's a a fun excuse to see her while um she's filming because otherwise we can't really talk to her or find out how she's doing she didn't have her phone or anything so it gave us an opportunity to like know what was happening um that at that point in the show right okay okay i forgot about that there's no no communication whatsoever with the outside world nope not at all Oof. okay so when you got there did they tell you what the date was going to be beforehand they did. It was supposed to be something different, actually, but it rained. So they had to do a little switcheroo. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And, um, like, the behind-the-scenes of it, like, did they tell you which um, guys were going to be there? No, we didn't know any of that. We just oh. knew we were going to be on a group date. Because we didn't know, I mean, I didn't know any of the guys were on the show except for the ones that were at the after the final rose the finale mm-hmm. when they introduced themselves. I don't know if they didn't know any of the guys from the show. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we just went into it knowing that we were going to see her and that we were going to go on a group date, but we didn't know anything more than that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that reaction from Tia seeing Colton was, like, the real first reaction of her seeing him? Um... I imagine Tia must have had an idea that he might be there because mm-hmm. she knew he was on the show. Mm. None of us knew. I think Caroline knew because Caroline um, is the closest to Tia out of the group. Okay. But um, when we all sat down and Becca told us, like, oh, Colton's here, we were all like, who's Colton? Like, I had no <laughs> idea who this person was. Yeah. Or that they had dated. So, um, but I think probably Tia had an idea that he might be there. Okay. Okay. Um, and then maybe Caroline, too. Okay. Yeah, and maybe Caroline, yeah. Okay. I would the rest lo- of us didn't know. I would love a, like, real first reaction of, like, oh, my God, ugh, that guy. <laughs> oh, that guy yeah. I dated. <laughs> Oof. Well. Well, I think the interesting thing for me, like, watching it back was when we were all there with her and we kind of were all talking about, because obviously you guys only see, like, a snippet of what actually was there, but one of the things that she said was that she had ended it with him. Mm-hmm. Um, 
prior to him going on the show. And then he his story was kind of like he had ended it with her. So it's it's unclear what the what the real story is, but um mm. but yeah. And they had like distance issues too. Um, I don't really know. I don't that's the thing is I don't want to speculate why they broke up because it's it's not clear. Yeah, right. And I, I don't know the distance of Arkansas to Utah or whatever it was. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's a distance thing or if it mm. was a logistical thing. Um, you know, it's a it's a complicated time because, like, you know, some people want to go on Paradise, and so mm. you know, it just there's just a, there's a lot of different ways that it could have gone down, and I'm not really sure how it did. So. Okay. And I haven't tried to done it, do any more research to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we will get to that soon enough. But I do okay. want to ask one more question. What did you think of the batch of guys that you saw? Like, who was your favorite? Um, so it was interesting. Of the batch of guys I saw that day, like, um, I thought the most, like, natural, like, kind of chill, easygoing one was Will's. Mm. Um, which makes sense because he didn't even audition for the show or have someone submit him. I think one of the casting directors like found him okay. in a store when he was buying his headphones or something like that. Okay. Um, and then I really liked Jason too. He was really sweet and oh. like easy to talk to. Um, they were all really nice. Like they were all super nice. Um, Jordan, uh, first of all. I'm obsessed with Jordan because he's just <laughs> hilarious and really good television. Yes. But that day when we met him, I asked, the first thing I asked him was like, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself. And the first thing he said to me was, I'm a Wilhelmina model. No. <laughs> he goes, well, I'm a Wilhelmina model. And I was like, oh, okay. I mean, Wilhelmina's legit. Yeah, but, um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, he's he's hilarious. <laughs> To me. Oh, yeah. No, he definitely keeps the entertainment going, for sure. He's, like, the only one that's really, like, entertaining, if you think about it. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so let's get into the beginning of the episode. We see these guys. They're all in the house together. They're cooking breakfast. You see their bunk beds looking absolutely treacherous. Is that what the bunk <laughs> beds look like with those terrible bed sheets? I mean, they're not... They give you new sheets every season, so it's not like they're using the sheets, but they're not Egyptian cotton or anything. It's not, you're not living in the lap of luxury, let me tell you. Oh my god, I saw their rooms, I was like, whoa, and there's like random fireplaces in the rooms, like, they just look yeah, cramped. It's not as comfortable as you would think living in a mansion would be. Right, in a mansion in LA, right. Yeah. Uh, my man, oh, we call him gospel. Well, it's only... Who? <laughs> I was going to talk about gospel, Chris. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Can you tell me why you like him? Sorry, I'm eating licorice. No, it's fine. We always have a snack or a wine with us. Okay. Um, I just really love that he brought that gospel choir in first. No, no that was a great... No, that was a great entrance, but he's done nothing... <laughs> <laughs> but this outfit that we see him in he's in a heathered gray matching separate that is like that is very stylish i think wait what which outfit went on his one-on-one date no on like when they were like sitting around eating breakfast he was in like lounge wear that's concerning <laughs> <laughs> I think that's concerning. Like, <laughs> it's too frou I don't think, I don't think this guy's loungewear should be that stylish. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I loved it. Well, they get a, um, what do they get, a card, an announcement from uh, Chris Harrison that not everybody will get dates this week. And again, mm-hmm. Becca is not playing. So if you are messing around, you're going to get cut. So yeah, gonna, she's not. Mm-mm. So there's going to be... Tough. Yeah, she's... And I guess you would be, like, a month after you got dumped on TV. Yeah. No, I think she is 
you taking it seriously? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we all know that the Bachelor producers like to not take certain <laughs> people or things seriously. So mm-hmm. the fact that she's, like, taking the reins is great. I agree completely. So on the group date, it's Wills, Jason, Jordan, David, Jean Blanc, and Colton. Mm-hmm. That sounds right. Yep. Um... I and, met all of them. Yes, and this is the one where CN was there. <laughs> um, Becca had on. Did they make you wear these like Birkenstocks? Um, I think she is a stylish, a stylist. Oh, um, she's Becca's gorgeous, and she is a beautiful figure, so everything looks good on her. But yep. I'm not loving the choices that the stylist is making. For her. Uh, I either, like, am dying in love with it, or I'm like, Becca, what is this? Yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of, I kind of agree with you. So, on the date, it's Becca M, our girl CN, Kendall, Caroline, and Tia. Right? Are all the friends. Yep, that's all of us. Um, and... Sidekicks. Yep. <laughs> um, and they knew they were going to be meeting six guys... And Becca tells Tia that Colton will be there. And there's some suspicion that Colton thought Tia was going to be the Bachelorette. I I mean, I think that that wouldn't have been a crazy thought if he had it. Like, a lot of people thought she was going to be the Bachelorette because no one knew that what was what had gone down with um, Ari and, and Lauren and Becca. We kind of all knew before... I guess the rest of America knew, so I didn't necessarily think Tia was going to be the bachelorette. Mm-hmm. But you know, someone who doesn't who didn't really know what was going on would would obviously think that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because she was she was like the obvious favorite. pick. Yeah. So if this was if you were in Becca K's shoes, would this be like a deal breaker for you? Like he would have to leave the house, or would you kind of hear him out? Um. I would need more of an explanation, and it's possible that he gave her that on camera, or, like, that he gave her that, and it just wasn't aired for whatever reason. True. But I would need to understand, like, okay, why exactly did you guys break up? Like, did you break up because you really wanted to go on the show? Did you break up because you'd break up before, you know, even it was announced that I was going to be the bachelor? Like, I just want to know the details, because if it was, like, he liked her and he thought she was going to be the bachelorette. And then when he found out she wasn't, he still wanted to go on the show. That mm. that would be a little bit concerning for me, but oh, I don't yeah. know. I don't know what the chain of events actually were and the timing. So I can't really say, but you know, if it was like, if it was the fact that, you know, let's say they stopped talking well before it was announced and, um, and they ended for whatever reason because of distance or because she wanted to go on paradise or who knows who knows why they ended then then yeah then maybe i would hear him out but it just kind of depends what the reason was i was surprised that he got the group date rose um but but yeah i mean she i she, we could i could tell that she was interested in getting to know him a little bit more once she had tia's blessing oh yeah and colton is like a serious catch I think, at least. Yeah, I think he's a cutie. Mm-hmm. He's a cutie. He's got a nonprofit. He's he's good. He's a good egg. Yeah, he is. I mean, if if the timing is not suspect, then he is. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Um, so we go into the date. It's going to be like a spa day type thing, and. Um, as soon as Colton walks in, he turns bright red seeing Tia. <laughs> like tomato. Yeah, it was a little awkward. Ooh, it was. Yeah, what definitely was. I mean, I to me, I just, I, I was glad that I wasn't involved in, you know, that <laughs> yeah. triangle. Um, yeah, because that was the first time that Colton and Tia had seen each other and Colton didn't know Tia was going to be there, but Tia knew he was going to be there. Yep. Like, she knew once, you know, we got to see Becca that he was going to be there. And um, 
they did have something before, and it's not like they ended on bad terms. So I'm sure there was some, you know, there's some energy or some chemistry there between them. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, it was definitely a bit awkward, but I think everyone handled it really well. All three of them handled it well, so. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. Um, I have a little bit of a problem with what Colton was wearing. It looked like an Old Navy hoodie. Oh, yeah. Do you remember in his package how he had a velour vest on? Yes. Do you remember that? I do. That was one of the most hideous things I've ever seen. Oh, my God. Like, I've never even seen that, like, at a store. Like, I don't even know where you would buy that. You know, but... us people on the coasts of the country, we're like, ha- where do you guys get this stuff? But I think it's at yeah. these boutiques and things in the Midwest. Maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. They all, what do they do, like, assign everybody to a girl? No, not Who's really. Been? It was just kind of like... The girls sat down, and then the guys kind of just went, just gravitated. It wasn't like yeah. a you go with you. It was kind of pretty open and a free for all. And then we all kind of like switched. So we all, I got to talk to, I think all of us talked to all the guys at least, you know, mm. at some point. Like we were there for a while. Oh um, really? It didn't, it didn't seem like it, you know, with the, with the episode because they cut it down to just a few minutes. But yeah, we were there with them for at least like an hour and a half, I would say. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, she forgot Jason's name, which, you know, happens. There's Yeah, split. he handled it so well, though. <laughs> he did. He did. Yeah, he really did. And, I mean, it makes sense. And not that it makes sense. She has a lot of names to remember, and mm-hmm. he hadn't had a date yet. Right. That was his first date. Because he didn't go on a date the first week. So, um, so I think, you know, it makes sense that she might forget her name. And, it's, and I do think she kind of had a little bit of... Um, chemistry with him mm-hmm. and so maybe she was nervous when like she saw him she's like shit what's his name <laughs> you know it could have been like when you like see someone and you like get a little bit see someone you like and you get a little bit nervous like mm-hmm. that could have been what happened yeah for sure Um, but then, as you said, the guys start jumping in and doing pedicures, and this is my escape to Wakanda moment, (laughs) because I would literally rather lay down dead than have these guys doing my nails. Oh! Uh, I told them, I was like, um, I just got my nails done, (laughs) um, so you can, I was like, you can massage my shoulders, and that's all that you can do. (laughs) That's literally what I said. I was like, no one is painting my feet or my toes, Mm -mm. my feet or my hands, but you can massage my shoulders. And so then I kind of started that trend. Okay. Um, Yeah. I wasn't interested in having a stranger, let alone like a guy who never does that. (laughs) My fingers or my toes. Yeah. No. And I didn't shave that day, so. Oh, well. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So uh, Becca... Talks to Tia in the other room about the whole Colton and Tia situation, and it's really unclear, like, the, the chronological order of what happened is fuzzy. Mm-hmm. Um, we know yeah. they spent a weekend together. We know Colton's a virgin. Yeah. So, it's, we have all these elements <laughs> going on. Yeah. I and mean, that's pretty much all I know, too, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, and that, you know, one went back to their state, the other one back to the other state, and they stayed friends, I guess, and now they're both... Yeah, I guess they stayed friends, and Tia was just giving the blessing that she was fine with, you know, both Becca and Colton pursuing a relationship. Yep, yep. Well, then (laughs) we, um, we move on with the blessing... Um, which is a good thing because Colton seems like really, really great and a good match for Becca so far. So far. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I mean, I think that, I think that they're not a bad match, but I didn't, I don't see her, I don't know, when I saw them together, like, I thought that there were people who might be a better fit for her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's young. 
Yeah, he's 26. They're all really young. This yeah. season has a lot of young guys, mm-hmm. like a lot younger than Rachel's guys were. Yeah, and um, I, gu- I guess younger than Ari. <laughs> yeah, but like, the, I think the oldest guy in Becca's group is like 31 or 32, and like in Rachel's group, I think Brian was like 37. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. But also Rachel was a bit older than Becca, so maybe that's why. But yeah, I found that the guys were pretty young. And you could kind of tell based on like how they looked and yeah. their energy. Yeah. Like especially David. Oh my god, David looks like he could go to Gymboree and fit oh, into the clothes. No. Oh my he's, god, he looks... he's tragic. <laughs> he looks so young. Oh my goodness. Um but we get to the um, I guess cocktail party, like after the, the yes. main date. Um, Becca's in a red halter, you know. Love it. Love a red. I'm trying moment. to remember. <laughs> it was cute. Uh, it was cute. Yeah, yeah, that was cute. Yeah, that was cute. Um, and they are talking about how um, they all need to kind of play fair. And someone says everyone carries themselves off as men of integrity, and they just pan onto David's turquoise manicure at that moment. Oh, yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> I was like, you guys are so shady. <sighs> that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because all the boys got their nails painted, but I guess some of them took it off before the nighttime. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I guess... I don't know why you keep it on. I think on. the only one that really pulled it off was Jordan. He pulled oh, off yeah. his red nails super well. He did. He had him on for a while. <laughs> yeah, his he, when he was doing his like his interview with his nails, it looked pretty amazing. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Um so Jean Blanc pulls Becca aside and pulls out a head massager that he packed. That was bizarre. Actually, that could have been, you know what? That's my, oh, no, that can't be my escape to Wakanda. Um, darn it. You have multiple? I don't know. <laughs> this is hard, but I forgot about that. That was so awkward. It was so like, what weird. Was, what was that? I don't know. How do you fit that in a suitcase with all the rest of your but stuff? also the, his reasoning for it. <laughs> like, like, when she was like, oh, did you steal that from <laughs> from the spa date and he's like no I just I bring along things when I care about people and I care about I'm just like wait so you're I'm really confused at how we're making this work I, I that was that was very bizarre to me it was that was a weird prop yeah that was weird <laughs> that was weird I never um don't quite understand that one mm-mm <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then we go on to Jason. She says that, like you said earlier, she has, like, a crush on him and gets nervous around him. And, you know, forgot his name. Which is cute. Really cute. Yes, very cute. Um, and they kiss. Cute. Oh, yeah, they do kiss. Mm -hmm. That looks like a good kiss. They look like they're both into it. Yep. And, like, on a, on a couch with, like, a blanket. Like, real cute. Yeah, and you can tell when someone when she's into it or she's not into it. So yeah, I feel like she was she was into that kiss. Mm-hmm. And then we go on to the the juicy stuff of Jordan and his Tinder record. <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, I can't. I didn't know Tinder actually sent out notifications when you reach milestones like that. I know. I didn't think it was like like Foursquare where you get like badges, but I guess you get badges. I guess so. I mean, the guys did have a point when they were like, "Okay, in order for you to get four thousand matches, you must be spending a lot of time on twi- on Tinder." Yeah. But I mean, still good for him. But that's a lot of time swiping. <laughs> It is, and it's just, like, how big is where you live to where 4,000 people are even on Tinder active? I don't know. Like... I mean, I did think it was kind of, like, bizarre that they brought that up in that moment, because mm -hmm. it probably was something that he said in the house, like, you know, maybe the cameras weren't on him, and he was just talking to the other guys. Maybe he wasn't bragging, or maybe he was, but it didn't seem relevant. 
Right. I just didn't see, like, how that really pertains to what's happening with him on the show. Like, it just didn't seem relevant to me. Like, okay. And it's I, like sort of like okay, so are we can all start talking about how many people all the guys have slept with now. <laughs> that, that's a lot more relevant to me than yeah, how yeah. many matches you've gotten on Tinder. Yeah, for sure. And it, I think did David bring it up? Of course, <laughs> that was my escape to Wakanda moment. Yes, <laughs> because at the end when he was like trying to get all the other guys to be like. Wasn't that funny? And they were all just like staring so uncomfortably <laughs> at him. He's like, "Well, it's you know, it is kind of like a comedic relief." And they're like, "No, like no one said it. like that was the most." He's just, yeah, he's he's pretty. I'm surprised he didn't get sent home, but I guess we don't know because we haven't seen the road ceremony oh, yeah, yet. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, true, 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 true. But yeah, I'm shocked he's still there too. Because he also came in the chicken suit, so he was the gimmick. Yeah, and then he tried to bring it up to Becca, being like, oh yeah, Jordan was his, in his underwear, and she's like, um, well, <laughs> you came in a chicken suit, so you can't really <laughs> say anything about anyone. Like, there's no room for you to talk, my guy. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. Um, and... Uh, Jordan and David start fighting. Wills is sitting there. Oh, that was hilarious. <laughs> oh, my God. Shout out to Wills. He I was sitting there like, I can't believe I signed up for this. <laughs> that's basically, that's exactly what. You know what it reminded me of? And I wish I had been more like that um, in my moment when it was happening to me. It was when... Viviana and Crystal were fighting <gasps> oh. in the second or third episode. It was when Crystal had interrupted her. Mm-hmm. And you couldn't tell, but at one moment, I was, like, sitting right next to them. And I looked so mortified. But I <laughs> wish I had just been laughing because it was actually funny. <laughs> right. But I was just, like, I was more mortified because so I was like, am I going to have to deal with this for the rest of however long I'm here? But I should have been laughing. Like, yeah. it was... Yeah, it was hysterical. When he pulled his jacket over his whole face. Yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> it was everything. <laughs> that was amazing. Oh, my goodness. And then um, Becca comes in after her kind of one-on-one time with David that he spent talking about someone else, which is <laughs> always a bad sign. Bad. Really Ooh. bad. Usually the precursor to going home. Like, there was no connection there whatsoever. Like, nothing romantic mm. about that conversation at mm. all. None. Um, and Becca high-fives Jordan. And this is my Becca UIA moment. Because she really took it in stride that this man had a 100% success rate. and Which, oh, I doubt. I, I would say that he swiped on at least 6,000 people. Because why stop at four? But... Yeah, no, he there's no there's no way he has a hundred percent, but he probably has a high percentage. I mean, mm-hmm. like I I wouldn't date Jordan. He's not like my kind of guy, but I could see if you know he posted the right photos and yep. He doesn't seem like he's he seems like he's actually a, a smart guy. So, you know, he mm-hmm. has a good vocabulary and he puts sentences well together, better than a lot of them there. <laughs> oh no. It's true. Don't you think? <laughs> oh my god. I mean he knows I think he knows how entertaining his personality is and so he's turning it up. I think he's dialing everything up, which is smart when you're on TV. Yeah, it's true. He's getting he's getting more airtime than than anyone else. Yep. And I think with Tinder it's purely based on looks and he has all the right pictures that are probably yeah. photoshopped and everything. So Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So Becca just kind of took it and ran with it, which I love. So Becca, you are right with me, girl. <laughs> um, and then they had a really awkward hug. Her and Jordan had the most awkward hug. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so awkward. <laughs> so awkward. Wait. And then remember when he sat down? And I was like, you know, it's really. I know it's hard because I'm a model. <laughs> yes. You remember that? Yes. Oh, no. I guess that was my other (laughs) (laughs) excuse.
Yeah, I have a lot of things. <laughs> he was like, I have a hard time matching with someone like you who has all the qualities I need in a partner. Like, what? Come on, bro. Yeah, it was, it was awkward for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he said to her, you are something I'd like to see myself oh, yeah. next to. You're the goal. I was like, the goal? <laughs> I need someone with a bright smile. You a bright smile. Wait, yeah, that was, that was. <laughs> oh, man. I was just like, what are you talking about? It's funny because, like, it's funny that Jordan and David are kind of being pinned against each other and aren't getting along because they both have zero chemistry with her. <laughs> right. Like, I can tell that that she doesn't like either of them. But the thing is, like, Jordan is just a little bit more interesting and entertaining to watch. Right, right. And then David's a troll. Yeah, he is. <laughs> and a snitch. And a snitch. Ooh. So, we move on, and Colton gets the date rose, right? Yeah. Which... Yeah. I didn't get that, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Me either. I thought it definitely should have gone to... Mm. Jason. Oh, yeah, Jason. Yeah. Yep. I think it should have been Jason. He she forgot his name. <laughs> he took it super well. They had a really nice kiss. They had a nice conversation. Mm-hmm. It was his first group date, and he, like, he did well. I don't know. I thought when we left that day, I remember thinking, like, oh, Jason's probably going to get the date rose tonight. Oh, wow. Because he was so, like, friendly and nice to everyone. And, yeah. I mean, yeah. And I'm, maybe, like, I can't speak for all the other girls, but I just thought, other than Will's, he seemed, like, the most natural to me. Mm, okay. Okay, yeah. Like, he wasn't really putting on a front or a show or had a story or had a perfectly, you know, scripted whatever about yeah. why they were there and what they're looking for and how much they care about Becca. Okay, can I just say, it really bothers me that, like, all these people say how much they care about someone that they met, like, so recently. Yes. Especially if you don't have a one-on-one. Like, if you have a one-on-one, I think that really does change things. Yeah, yeah. But if you haven't had a one-on-one, you don't have those feelings for someone. Like, mm-hmm. Lincoln, I know he wasn't on this date, but whew, anyway, we'll get to it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, Lincoln during football, he went a little crazy. Yeah, but Lincoln last week, he got my escape to Wakanda moment last week. Yeah, he's he's he needs to go to Wakanda and, like, <laughs> learn a few things. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> but in, like, way more cursing. <laughs> anyway, speaking of cursing, it is time for Gospel Chris's one-on-one. Yay. And... <laughs> Oh my gosh. And they go to Capitol Records, which is a really cool venue. Uh huh. Um, have you ever been there? You're in LA. I haven't. Oh. No. Yeah, it looks cool. I haven't been to any records, record places here in New York except for Tower. Uh, is it Tower Records? Is there a Virgin? One of those. I don't know. Um, um, yeah. His outfit. I loved it. I thought he looked like a, like a mega church pastor. He looked like a boy band member. <laughs> I, l- I really enjoy those, like, hoodie vest things. See, I feel like those should be reserved for, like, 10-year-old boys and under. <laughs> but they're but not really, like, they don't, like, flatter anything. No, no, yeah. but that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, he had a very, quite a tapered skinny jean. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I don't remember the jean as much. But... quite tight on the ankles. <laughs> <laughs> really, really tight. I don't mind that as much as the sweater jean vest. <laughs> um, and then Becca was giving me, like, Christian, Courtney Love, 90s, 80s. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. It, it was good. It was really... Um, like, I would have never seen those items in a store. I liked that. They they looked unique. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was cute. 
I wish they were going out somewhere with her wearing that and not, like, in... Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that, I don't know. That would have been fun if they, like, went out dancing or something. Mm-hmm. Be able to, like, other people to see how cute it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, did you know this guy, Richard Marks? Never heard of him. Me either. He had a nice voice, though. Yeah, and he has that song that everybody knows. What song was it? It was, um, it's called Late Day Waiting. Mm. Yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but his voice was nice. Yeah, yeah. And he looks uh, definitely older, so for him to be singing like that is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, and he had not only some dating tips... But they also got a little homework assignment where they had to write a love song for each other. And Chris looked petrified. I was really nervous for him. I thought he was going to explode. He did not. Or implode. Yeah. Yeah, he. I mean, honestly, that'd be tough to do for a first date. Mm -hmm. Like, write a love song. Because you don't want it to be too serious but you don't want it to be like you're not taking it seriously enough right uh, that's not an easy thing to do yeah so i i wouldn't have wanted that date <laughs> yeah especially because they didn't spend a whole lot of time together no so it was like okay this is based off of our two conversations <laughs> like exactly oof that was that was a lot and so he's in the hallway he's like pacing right he's like oh my god what am i gonna write He's, like, going through the hallways. He doesn't know what to do. He sits down on the floor. And him and Becca start talking. And he was telling about his parents got divorced at a young age. His dad's not in his life. Um, And Becca was like, I promise not to judge you. Yada, yada, yada. Whatever, right? And then Uh Chris does that thing where guys say, can I have a kiss? Is that weird (laughs) to you? Or do you enjoy this? Um. depends like I think it depends in that situation okay I think when you're first starting to like date someone I obviously want someone to be as smooth as possible Mm because I think that like automatically makes them more attracted or makes me more attracted to them um like he could have just gone like at one point oh like this person did it perfectly Jason did it perfectly on their first kiss when they were sitting there he was like he kind of did, like, a little come here and then, like, brought yeah. his chin in towards yep. it. Like, it was, like, she wanted it. It was natural. It didn't feel like, you know, it was seemed confident. Um, so I think it just kind of depends. Like, this situation, no, I mean, it wouldn't have, like, turned me on. But, you know, <laughs> to each their own. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And then they start going over these lyrics with Richard, Richard Marks. Guy's apparently so famous. Um, And they're really cute lyrics. Yeah, actually, it was funny. I was sitting there with um, with my boyfriend and baby Becca, and we were expecting his lyrics to be, like, I don't know. We were just expecting to clown on his lyrics, and we were all kind of silent. And then afterwards, we were like, oh, that was actually really good. We were like, none of us have anything bad to say. (laughs) Right, yeah. Yeah, they were 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 really sweet. Mm-hmm. And they, it, they were sweet. it seemed like they had to do with what just happened. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> he was able to, like, he was able to talk about his feelings, but not in a way that was, like, too gushy. Like, if Lincoln had written that, it would have been, like, I want you to have my babies, <laughs> and I have never seen a woman more beautiful than you. And, oh, my God. You know, it just would have been too much but his was like subtle enough but still heartfelt yeah yeah they were nice um and then becca had some lyrics don't really remember them too much but i'm sure they were great hers were hers was a lot shorter than his or maybe they cut it i'm not sure but yeah um hers were sweet too but i think he definitely took the prize Mm -hmm. for the better lyrics back in the house right they have Mm -hmm. a group date announcement Mm-hmm. where it's going to be... She... I don't know if she does this on purpose, but I think she divvies them up 
of like the fine ones and then she sprinkles in like one or two other fine ones in her other group dates and like really sees the personality and the other like the guys with like the big buff bodies they do all the real physical stuff because this is all like like like, okay wait so you said that she did that last time yeah last time with the dodgeball date it was like almost the same group it was like leo um chris stone um uh, oh, so Mike. you think she puts all the athletic ones, like, on one, in one date, and then the non-athletic ones in another one, in yep. another category? Yep. Maybe. <laughs> Which would make sense. Yeah, I mean, because look how good, like, Chris Dawn and Clay were on the, you know, football date. Yeah, yeah, they were good. And Garrett was really good, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he scored, right, or something? Or he, like, lifted someone up. He had some aggression. (laughs) Jeez. (laughs) Oof. Well, they announce that little group date, and then we go back to the one-on-one. And one thing that I noticed, when they walk into this giant empty room, and it's just, like, a table for two sitting there, that must be so awkward with, like, no music, no nothing. Yeah, it's a little awkward. It's awkward. Right? It's yeah. like, it's, the silence must be very loud. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's definitely awkward. Like, if you don't, if you don't have a good vibe with someone. Mm-hmm. And it's also hard, like, in the beginning, when you're not used to, like, for her, it's probably not as awkward because she's done the whole season of it already. Right, true. But for the guys, or if it's your first time doing it, you can't get, you know, it's, like, hard to forget that the cameras are there, so you're like... Not only are you trying to, you know, get to know this person, but, like, you know, you should be cognizant of, like, what's coming out of your mouth. Whereas, like, if you're on a normal date, even if you say something silly, at least it's not, like, being recorded and going to be <laughs> right. displayed to the entire country. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. And that always has to be in the back of your mind, even though they tell you not to yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I mean, it should be. <laughs> yeah, true. It should be. Oh, my goodness. Well, Chris and Becca, their outfits, I hated them both. I. What were they each wearing? Well, Becca had on what? Oh, that, like, blue, sparkly, rhinestone shirt? It was a mesh illusion jumpsuit. With, like, rhinestones, with, like, with big rhinestones bedazzled. on it, right? Yeah. 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 They're giving her a lot of bedazzled, <laughs> like, stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, moving on. Yeah, moving on. And then Chris had on a silver suit, which made me want to just jump out my window. Oh, no. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm not surprised after the vest and yes. whatever else he was wearing. <laughs> oh, my God. But aside from that, they had some great chemistry. They got really, really deep really quick. You think they had good chemistry? Well, you know what it was? It was really good friend chemistry. Yeah. Which I think is important in a relationship, too. That's true. Okay, fair enough. You know? Um, I think I think she probably feels safe around him because he's kind of more vulnerable than she is. Mm. But, I don't know, I guess I could never get past how he handled the thing in the very first episode with the other guy and oh, you know, for the right yeah. reasons and, yeah. and all of that. So, I just think he's kind of... I don't know, the gossip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, that'll, I'm sure, I'm sure whatever is meant to happen will happen and it'll show itself. But mm-hmm. yeah, they seemed, I, they seemed to get along easy enough. I actually thought he might not get the rose that night after the, like when they showed the preview. Yes. Of him kind of freaking out. I thought maybe he wasn't going to get the rose, but alas, he did. He did. He did. And they were... Again, dancing to Richard Marks playing that same song that neither CN or I remember. So. <laughs> I still don't remember. <laughs> and it's famous. And I still like that song by that guy. Ugh, sorry, Richard. Um, <laughs> but they end up having a good date. And you know what? It, what you said earlier about the guy being vulnerable, I think is so important because I know that gives you gives me as a woman at least a kind of sense of security in a relationship Mm -hmm. so i think that's really important i agree 
Um, so on the group date, we have Chris Stone, which both Natasha and I don't trust. <laughs> <laughs> we don't trust him at all. He's too good looking. He's what? He's too good looking. Oh, I don't think he's that good looking. <gasps> what? Chris Stone? Yeah. No, I think Wills is a lot cuter than him. Really? You think Chris Don is cuter than Wills? Like overall, yeah, for sure. I will. Oh, no. Cause I, we think that Chris um, Wills needs some like. How is his hair in real life? Um, it was fine, but Chris Don like has a receding hairline. He does. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's fine. We don't want a hairline Will shape. Will had a hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god if we just have a thing with these light-eyed black guys i don't know man he's a harlem globetrotter too so he's like a performer oh, and no, an athlete I'm, Woo. yeah i'm not attracted to chris Don, but okay <laughs> so chris Don's not to be trusted <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> um ryan who i keep forgetting about ryan banjo ryan yeah he has gotten like no airtime yeah, none. 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 <laughs> like, I don't even think they've shown him in an interview. No. Nope. <laughs> like, like, zero. And he's, he's cute. Yeah. But he must be not interesting. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Um, I mean, he plays that banjo. I don't know if he's, like, if he brought the banjo or not. I don't know, but they've given, he's gotten no airtime, which is surprising. I thought he was going to have a little, you know be a little character on the show but i think maybe jordan just yeah is overshadowing everyone probably probably um we have john too who obviously I who's mean, that he is the guy who invented the app for venmo oh yeah that's right he's legit yeah <laughs> yeah like, he's not it's crazy too like he didn't like he doesn't like work for venmo like he's one of like the top people that started venmo Really? I think, he's, I think he's probably, from what the rumors I've heard, is like he's like one of the wealthiest people they've ever had on the show. <gasps> no. Yeah. I wonder why he's single and has to go on The Bachelorette. That's so interesting. Well, you know, he, he probably, he's lived in um, Northern California mm-hmm. and the tech world is kind of insular and kind of around the same kind of people so maybe he just wanted he's not that old so maybe he yeah. just wanted to, a different experience like that's something I'm sure none of anyone in his circle is, would even remotely think to do so maybe <laughs> yeah, he just wanted to true. kind of go <laughs> out of his it's like it's like me it's like what people said about me going on the show except like yes. 10 times more because like <laughs> you know it's just very different but um, that is true yeah you guys are parallel in that way you're like why are you not with someone already <laughs> yeah <laughs> what i'm sure people will be interested now that you know they know he invented finmo mm-hmm. yeah for sure um and he's on this football date mike who i agree with leo looks like a woman to me oh he has the you long know what? Blonde Except hair. Leo has no nerve talking about <laughs> anyone when his hair is longer and thicker than all of the girls from our season. <laughs> like, I don't. That was he was the wrong person to be commenting on anyone's <laughs> hair. I didn't get that. But anyway, I know it's Mike's like facial structure. Like he just yeah. Looks I mean, I'm not pretty. I'm, he's not. Yeah, he's not like that. I mean, he, I'm sure he's a nice guy. But yeah. Next. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely not. Um, Lincoln, of course. Oh, Lincoln. Oh, Lincoln. Um, Connor, <laughs> Blake, one of our faves. Clay. You like Blake? Love Blake since he came on after the final rose with a giant horse. Horse. Yeah, Blake's sweet, and um, he seems pretty normal. How tall is he in real life? Do you know? A good height. He looks like he's probably like six two, six three, which is nice. perfect. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, but that's the dream. Like anywhere between like six one and six four. Yeah, it's perfect. Ideal. <laughs> um, Clay, Leo, and Garrett. Yep. 
So they're on this group date. They show Jordan still thinking pensively with this manicure. I just... Oh, no. <laughs> just keep doing this. Oh, my God. And then Jordan is kind of like... This is before the group date. Jordan's kind of like poking at Colton um, and asking him about Tia because he thinks that's kind of the equivalent to them asking about his 4,000 likes or matches or whatever. Yeah. To be honest, I didn't think it was that outlandish for him to ask about Tia. Like, I think if, you know, if you don't want to talk about an ex that is un- that's unrelated to the show, fine. But, like, Tia's very, I mean, she was literally just on this past season. So <laughs> I don't think it's unfair for any of the guys to be curious like hey what's the deal but I get why Colton might not want to because there's probably something that is a little bit not great about the situation yeah like unresolved yeah some part of the story that wouldn't maybe paint him in the best light Mm. I imagine Mm -hmm. yeah me too because he he immediately tried to shut it down like no this is one on one (laughs) yeah yeah like oof I don't know. I don't know what's behind that door, but I'm sure we'll see. Um, And Jordan said something about David where he said, I talk to God every day. And this was my nigga, you ain't shit moment. Because God has nothing to do with this, sir. God has nothing to do with this. Don't bring God into this. (laughs) Did Jordan say that? Yes. Yes. He said he talks to God every day, and then what? what every he day. Doing? He was talking about um, David and getting vengeance on David. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah that's, that was not necessary. Oh, my God, and they have biblical names, too. David and Jordan. No. Mm-mm. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I couldn't take it. Oh, I couldn't take it. Um. So... Also before this group date, more drama. So this is when the drama happened with David. Um, oh, gosh. Where they Fall saw the him. Bed. Yes. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh, my God. Lincoln said he was afraid David was going to die. Now, this was before the commor- commercial break, and I was like, mm. Well, Lincoln would say that. You were right. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> so I was like. Lincoln would get someone would get like a scrat a paper cut and if you like they might bleed out but <laughs> based on the amount of blood that they kept showing and like probably the loud thump he made when mm-hmm. he fell that's really scary I mean like those beds I slept on the top bunk when I was in the house um but I'm a pretty like calm sleeper mm-hmm. and I don't roll around a ton but I can imagine like if you're used to having a bigger bed, if you roll around a lot in your sleep, like that, I mean, I'm not, it's not that crazy that that happened. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. But the fact that he landed on his face, like (sighs) that, oh God, I can't even imagine. Cause those are like hardwood floors, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or tile. Ooh. Yeah. That's tough. Um, and the guys were talking about it, saying he looked like he got attacked by a bear. <laughs> um, yeah. All kinds that must of things. That scary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to see him dragged out like that? Originally, because we know how they are with the editing, originally I hypothesized that it was like a PA, that they just had this like random incident with some random person. But no, uh, it was really David in no, his underwear. Yeah. Getting carried out. I would out. be afraid of being one of those guys sleeping in my bed that night if I was on the top bunk. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'd be like, um, I'm requesting a larger mattress, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Um, and they go to Becca's suite and they tell her and he, he's going to still continue, which is good. Um, yeah. Same. He sounded actually a lot better than I expected when he answered the phone. Yeah, for sure. Um, same kind of thing with Mikkel. When she had to leave on your season, she still came back. Mm-hmm. Um, and next we go to, finally, we get to this group date. Where the first thing I noticed was Clay's butt. 
<laughs> oh yeah, he has a nice body. Yeah, and those pants were just so tight. I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> whoa. Um, and Chris Stone is always the first for a hug. See? Oh really? He's always the first one to give her a hug. Oh. Mm mm mm. I see. I don't find him to be <laughs> threatening or anything at all because I don't. I don't find him to be that. Interesting. Yeah, but, yeah. I want to see but, more from him, though. I really liked his dunk that he did on the first. Yes, video. that was really cool. Me too. That was like a, a yeah, fun was, party trick. Yeah, that was really cool. Mm -hmm. So they go on this field. They have a marching band playing. Becca's in a red jersey. It's a whole thing. And there are two women's football league players. Did you know about the women's football league? Okay, I didn't really know but you i was actually watching basketball wise the other day i know <gasps> which city show, there's only one city left oh. now <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what happened <laughs> oh that show i haven't watched it in a few seasons but i actually it was yesterday i stayed home sick yesterday and i was watching it and they had a woman's one of the girls like was on a women's football league so oh okay so I had heard about it, but, um, but yeah, I, I guess there is. Such yeah, a thing. I didn't. I had no idea about this, and they were like tough cookies. These two ladies, they were. Yeah, they were. They were not playing around, and they're really cute too. They yeah, they were. I like their like braids. Um, Clay and Becca were talking. I find Clay to really be just so cuddly that he's so sweet. Yeah, he's so sweet. He'll give you a toothache. He's so sweet. He's like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I don't know. But maybe no, that's I why I'm single. <laughs> I couldn't date him. Yeah. Um, but I could, like, be friends. We could bake cookies together. <laughs> yes. Like, I tweeted, I was like, I want to make vision boards with him. <laughs> vision boards. Like... But, you know, not to date. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I just felt like there wasn't a whole lot of, like, like chemistry between him and Becca there at that moment. At that moment, but let's let's go towards the... I feel like they're developed more throughout the episodes. Throughout yeah. The and in the evening and... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, you know, maybe when she saw him doing those drills, you know, they were like... Oh, yeah, I think that definitely turned up the heat a little bit. Yeah, yep. Um, and I think that'll do it with anybody, seeing them in their element mm -hmm. will, like, make you, I don't know, kind of turn yeah, everybody definitely. on a little bit. Um, Lincoln is not doing well with the drills. <laughs> <sighs> if I could grab that sigh from UCN and just play it every time we say Lincoln's name. <laughs> Sweetheart, I actually saw him out in LA. What? <laughs> the other day, um, and I was out. Was, it was Memorial Day weekend, oh. and he said hi to me. Um, I guess because he recognized me. Mm -hmm. um, and we spoke for a little while. I don't remember what we were talking. What we talked about. I was already like a few cocktails in at that point. But, yep. Mm -hmm. Um, I, he's, he seems sweet. He just is. He's trying too hard. Yeah. Yep. And in that, he's ends up making a fool of himself um, yeah. and just doing these drills crazy. Um, and then they finally get to the actual game, and the men are in the locker room getting way too into this. With yeah, that was hilarious. These crazy pep talks <laughs> about love and winning for love, as, as Lincoln was oh, doing. Oh, no. Oh, God. <laughs> No, I, oh, yeah, I, I feel it's hard to, it's hard to watch sometimes because I'm like, I want to be like, I know that these guys probably don't do things like this in their normal life, but it's not, it is a little bit like, what's the word, emasculating? Yes, for sure. Yeah, a lot of the things they have to do, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yep. Oh, my goodness. Well, they... Get on the field. The blue team is Lincoln, Clay, Blake, Mike, and John, which I think was a okay. little uneven. <laughs> With who was on the white team? Oh, no, they had Clay. Okay. 
So yeah, but uh, Clay was the only the only like, one. <laughs> yeah, the only one that did anything. Oh no, what's that one guy? Was it Mike, the one with the long hair? Mm-hmm. Or no, is it? Yeah, Mike's the one with the long hair. He made, he caught a touchdown from Clay. But oh okay. Still played through it. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, I think Clay wrote, ran two touchdowns and then threw the third touchdown. Oh, my God. No wonder he got but injured. I mean, he's an NFL athlete, so I guess that makes sense. Yeah. And um, the white team was Leo, Chris Stone, Connor, and Ryan. Um, and, and Garrett. Oh, yeah, and Garrett. We're trying to we're trying to get over Garrett here at Two Black Girls One Rose. I know, but. <laughs> I know. I yeah, I'm sure you, I haven't listened to you, the two episodes yet. Forgive me, but oh, that's okay. I imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had to make you know a statement. <laughs> um, yeah. I anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, Lincoln had uh, no idea what to do. <laughs> he was playing against his own team. <laughs> he was trying to block just whoever. Whoever came his way, he was trying to block him. Uh, he's just one of those people, he looks like he's an athlete, like his body's like mm-hmm. perfect, but he's like, he does, no, he's not, definitely did not have a natural um, instinct about him on that field. Nope. Um, so the game is tied. It's, you know, everybody's going crazy, whatever. Clay store, scores a touchdown and hurts his wrist. Yes. Has to go to the ER, and Becca was there by his side the whole time. Yeah, that was really sad. Yeah, that was... I felt really bad for him. Yeah, because... He's just such a sweetheart. Right, and his job is he, his body. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and for him to, like, hurt himself while playing, like, uh, with all these athletes who are miles... <laughs> Yeah. Below him in, yeah. in terms of skill. It's just yes. like so sad. Mm hmm. Ugh. And then um, he goes to the ER. They go to the cocktail party without him. And Garrett is there showing Becca how to tackle. Which I thought was like cute, I guess. Yeah, that was. It was I a little too physical. Wanted- he just wanted to get a butt grab, which yep. my boyfriend was like, you know, I don't blame him for that. That was not a bad move. Like, <laughs> that was an easy butt crush. Right. Right. Because um. there's, when you're on the show, until you get to, like, unless you have, like, a hot tub date, mm-hmm. or unless, you know, you get to fantasy suites, you don't really, like, you're always sitting, most of the time you're sitting down when you, like, kiss the other person. So if you do have some chemistry, you don't really get to get that physical. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's always kind of, like, hand in the hair, hand on the head, maybe. Like, you don't really get to, like, touch, you yeah. know, the other person's body, really. Right. Which I think is important when you're trying to see if you're a good fit. Yeah, and you're <laughs> trying to, like, eliminate <laughs> for yeah. Becca, like, trying to... Get some people out of here. Exactly. Um, so that was cute. And then Becca's dress was cute. I liked it. It looked like a robe. Oh, the velour one? Mm-hmm. I like the cut of it, but the the fabric yeah. wasn't my favorite. But the cut was cute. Mm-hmm. We're getting there. We're getting there. Yes. Yes. We're making progress. Um, she sits down with Lincoln. Lincoln's button is down to hmm, the fourth button. All the way down. All the way down. Again, looking like it's from Gap Kids. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice that, but um, yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Um, and Blake is just in the corner, just seething. Seething. Yeah. As I feel like if you really connect with someone, you should be like, I think in some ways... It's harder for the guys who go on this show than the girls who go on The Bachelor because I think men are naturally more territorial. Mm -hmm. Like, I think women are generally more, like, jealous, but men are more territorial. So if you, you know, really like someone and then you have to see them, like, being whisked away by someone else or see them kissing someone else, like, you know. And I think Blake really, really likes her at this point. So... 
it's probably he probably feels like his connection with her is the strongest because they've had a one-on-one like I would say compared to I mean Chris is the only other person that's had a one-on-one and I don't think their connection is nearly as strong as her and Blake's no yeah for sure Especially considering the subject matter of Blake and Becca's date. Like, it was, yeah, he got to exactly. know her a lot better. She just got to know Chris really well. Yes, yes, that's true. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. They got to know each other, whereas, like, yep. the, his one on one was mostly about him and his insecurities and his, you know, struggles and mm-hmm. not really about, like, okay, tell me about what you've dealt with because you know she has a story before she started dating Ari it's not like Mm -hmm. Ari's the only major you know milestone in her life right that other milestone showed up on the show too yeah (laughs) Ross Ross the boss (laughs) oh gosh Ooh wee yeah she's had a lot on TV I don't blame her for doing this you know why not why not put everything else on TV who cares Mm -hmm. um so, uh, Blake and Becca sit down. He calls her his girlfriend, which is so cute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is cute. It is? You don't sound into it. I mean, I don't know. Like, I always find it's hard. It's hard because, like, this show is, you can't compare this show to anything else in the real world because it's not like anything else in the real world. Mm-hmm. So maybe he feels like that um, in that moment. Like, I never felt like that just because I wasn't able to be like, well, no other, I wasn't able to think to myself, well, no other boyfriend I've dated has dated other people at the same time. So, or right. at least, wow, at least that I knew of. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I, like, I, I'm not like a huge, like proponent of the whole girlfriend boyfriend mm. thing but i think it's cute and i think he meant it yeah yeah definitely because he said it just out of the blue he didn't say it with like a whole lot of like a speech yeah i don't <laughs> even remember him saying it and we may have been talking i think maybe we were talking at the time mm. but the only reason i knew that he said it was because like i think in her interview she was like late called me his girlfriend mm-hmm. um so yeah it must have been pretty like natural the way that he said it yeah yeah um, and then they walk out and Clay walks in with a full blown cast <sighs> and that damn mock turtleneck looking like oh. Steve Jobs. <laughs> oh, oh my God. It's just terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Clay. Oh I like God. Clay though. He's so sweet. I can't say anything bad about him. He's I know. Just... I think he would be a really good bachelor. He might even be I too nice. I think he would be, but I think he'd be too nice. Yeah, yeah, he might be. You have be. to have a little... Because, I mean, if you think about it, you're breaking up with people on a daily basis. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> like, you have to have a little bit of... Um, I don't know what's the word. Not evil, but <laughs> a little bit of... I don't know how you to gotta say you got to be a little ruthless, I would say. A little ruthless... Yeah, a little selfish. Yeah, yeah. You can't. I don't. I don't know if he'd be able to do that. Yeah. Um. And uh, Clay and Becca talk. It's boring. I don't really understand this, but yeah, you know, it is boring. It, but their kiss seems a little passionate. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just not translating on TV. No, I mean, I probably think it is kind of boring. Like, <laughs> but. Honestly, but most of the conversations are kind of boring. But I don't think it's because of that guy. I think it's just because, like, in those, what you don't realize, like, in those situations, you're, like, sitting down so briefly. And it feels uncomfortable to, like, go into a full-blown conversation because you never know how long you're going to get. Like, you never Mm. know if someone's going to, like, swoop in, you know, in a short amount of time. So, um but yeah, I don't remember their conversation being that interesting. Yeah, it was just. But she did get my, she did get my um, Becca UI moment. Even though I love Becca, so she's always fine with me. <laughs> for giving Clay the rose. Oh yeah, he did get the date rose. That was nice. Yeah, that 
was really sweet because yeah. he like broke his wrist and everything. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oof. And then, okay, as they were leaving, I'm just watching this man entirely too closely, but as they're leaving, I think Christone had on an, a pendant with the continent of Africa. No, did he really? <laughs> I have to watch it back again, but I think Wait, so. Wait, you haven't talked about John Blanc at all. What are your... Oh, yeah. So, for me personally, right, me, myself... I am also a little distrustworthy of Jean Blanc just because he's a poet. And that makes me nervous. <laughs> I think he's corny. You think he's corny? Yeah, I think he's kind of corny. Yeah, yeah. I think that's like his part of his vibe and he doesn't embrace yeah. it as much as I want him to. Yeah. It's like it's like at some moments I'm like, oh okay, he seems Normal, he's not getting involved in the drama, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and you met him, but, right? Yeah, I did meet him. He was definitely nice. Like, yeah, nothing wrong with him at all. Yeah, nothing wrong with him. I just think I don't know. I don't think they're they're a good fit. Oh yeah, no, definitely not. And um, last week, our our followers are out here really like doing work because last week one of our listeners was at his cologne launch party no in florida <laughs> no she took pictures and video <laughs> but whatever anyway moving yeah. on anyway um so we are so now we're at the rose ceremony um becca's in a long red tube dress which is a little bit prom looking with the satin, but I like the color. Yeah. So I'm just gonna go with it. I liked it until the rhinestone buttons on the back. Yep. And then the matching satin shawl. Oh my god, did that give you Solange vibes? But she's not Solange, so it didn't work. No, it gave me like 80s <laughs> prom vibes. Yeah. Yeah, no bueno, no bueno. Yeah. Hopefully it gets better as the season goes in. Hopefully. I hope so. Yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, so she comes in and she's just realizing how this process is working again. She's finding all of this um, chemistry with these guys, which I can imagine is the biggest confidence booster in the world. Because a lot of the times after you break up with someone, you think there's no one else in the world who's going to match with you like they did. Oh, totally, yes. And now she's on this show where 26 guys are like, I love you. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. I think, I mean, especially even, like, it seems like there's at least four guys that she looks like she enjoys kissing. Mm-hmm. So that's like, that must be, <laughs> that must be a really good feeling. So at least you know that you have chemistry with, you know, four different potential guys. Right, before. right, yeah. And then the rest of them are still fawning over you. That's great. Yeah, it's great. Um, and she goes away with Connor, who I keep forgetting about. Oh, my Lord. Um, he just looks so young. Oof. Yeah, he also, like, you know, didn't do himself any favors when he threw the thing into the... Into the pool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so he gets, like, a little baseball set up, um, which is cute. I guess. She probably likes baseball a lot, though, because she's from Minnesota. So she probably likes all those outdoor sports. Baseball, football, all that stuff. So that was cute. Um, And then Clay is, like, really struggling because he needs an operation on his wrist and he might need to leave early. Yeah. Which is... That was tough. Yeah. I mean, he said it, like, he's like, I want to stay, but I support my family. Mm -hmm. And... If I'm not able to play football, then my family's going to go hungry, basically. Yeah. Which is really admirable. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. And then the fact that he was struggling with leaving because he might not meet someone like her, I thought was a little dramatic. But also good to know that, like, a lot of people struggle with this. Like, even uh-huh. an NFL bowler. Uh is, like, struggling with finding somebody he has chemistry with, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it was a bit dramatic, but the show's dramatic, so, you know, of course, that's 
the angle that you're going to go in. And he does seem like he's genuinely a nice guy. So, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe he hasn't met a lot of, I'm sure that there are women who are into him, but sometimes women who go after athletes aren't necessarily there for the right reasons, if you know what I mean. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, their intentions could be. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. Flat tummy tea related. But... Um, he goes and he's sitting by the fire and he just, uh, breaks up, essentially breaks up with Becca because he has to play football to support his family. Yeah. Um, and talking about how he could have fallen in love. They were, I thought, doing a lot for two people who didn't have a whole lot of chemistry. Yeah. It was interesting how they made that a pretty... Um, dramatic exit but I think you know I bet she maybe they had more chemistry than it was than we were able to see on the show yeah and and it is kind of hard especially because he's the first guy to like eliminate himself Mm -hmm. and you know he does kind of bring a lot to the table he's Mm -hmm nice and he's good looking and it doesn't seem like any of the other guys have any issues with him so it's probably an, it was probably an emotional moment for her because there was no it was like too early for her to be like okay well it probably wouldn't have worked like do I think right. she would have ended up with him no but it's too early on and there's still too many guys left for her to like really know that yeah yeah definitely and he's all around a good catch like you said yeah so exactly. it's tough to let that one go. And then you still have like David sitting in there. Um, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, and she's just emotional and loves how he wants to provide for his family. And you kind of see his character in that moment. I really want to see more of Clay. Me too. Yeah. I don't think we will though. <laughs> no, me either. Cause he didn't no, seem like the type to go to par- on paradise. Well, also like if he, if he left, oh, Natasha just posted another cute photo. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> if he left, then um, to because he needed to pursue his his career. Oh yeah, he's probably in training tra- camp right now. Mm-hmm. He's probably not on doing because par- they're filming Paradise right now. So oh, they are not doing Paradise. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you have a full man. Yeah, you're not doing paradise. Um, and she's crying. And this moment killed me when she said, I feel like I have nothing left. When you have fine Blake sitting in there, you have Christone, you have plenty. You have John, who invented Venmo. What? What do you mean you have nothing left? There's plenty left. Oh, yes, I know. But she probably, it was probably an emotional time for Mm -hmm. her. Yeah, there's a moment for her. Yeah. Um, And sadly, we didn't get to see who was eliminated. That was the episode. Um, We will. Yep. In the beginning of next episode. Mm Mm-hmm. And the previews look good. They go to Park City, Utah. Which is is cool. (laughs) I've been to Park City, Utah. Oh, really? Yeah, I went in January for Sundance. Um, and there's a moment where Becca says she feels disrespected, and if anyone else needs to go home, they should just go home and eliminate themselves. So oh. we start getting down to the wire again. <laughs> Next episode, this girl keeps having to get these men in line. Ooh. Wow. Well, I want to know what happened. I'm, I actually think the episodes are going to get, like, I think it's going to go up. It's going to, like, go up for a while then maybe climax and then maybe climax right before like hometowns and then that's when it gets kind of like more serious and Mm -hmm. you know lovey-dovey but i feel like yeah the next few episodes are probably going to be juicy yeah oh yeah definitely um and we'll we'll look forward to that so uh, any other predictions cn well, I know a lot, so I can't give any predictions because oh. there are things that I know. Ooh, you guys, I'm holding on to a gold mine. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to spoil it for you yeah. or for the listeners. 
Oh, all right. We'll just have to wait and see. You'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Sienna, again, for taking the time to recap with me. This was great. Thanks for having me. This was so fun. <laughs> And that's the end of the episode. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you love what you heard, which I'm sure you did, because it was juicy, you can please, if you can, subscribe to the podcast um, and rate and review us on iTunes. It really helps us out. We really appreciate it. We are on email, Twitter, and also now we're on Facebook, in case you guys still use that website. Um, So our email is the number two black girls the number one rose at gmail.com and our twitter is the number two blk girls the number one rose um and facebook if you search two black girls one rose you'll find us um we're just the first thing that comes up you know facebook already knows not to play with us unlike twitter um so yeah if you love it then keep coming back And we will see you guys next week. Bye.